Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise for another Christmas season. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness and for your grace and for your mercy. Father, I pray that you would bless this word, bless this word to families, bless this word to those that may be scrolling by. And I pray, oh God, that it would encourage each hearer's heart. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. 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 Well, God bless everyone. Uh, this is a new adventure, but we are excited to be doing this to lift up the name of Jesus or to magnify the name of Jesus. He's always already magnified because of who he is. God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. This this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I just don't want to be before you too long, but I want to share something with us on my heart. Thank God for my son who is uh, the creative one and said, let's do it this way. So here we are. We're going to be a blessing to someone we hope uh, this afternoon. In the book of Matthew, let's get into the word. Matthew chapter number one, Matthew chapter number one. And we're also going to be looking at Galatians chapter three and Romans chapter eight. We want to let the word do a lot of the talking and I will share some more thoughts on this thought that was dropped in my spirit. Everything pointed towards Christ. Everything pointed towards Christ and everything still points towards Christ. That Jesus is God's Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. So. A sign, a sign, if you would, a sign points or directs you to the destination. When you're driving on the freeways, a sign will let you know where you need to get off, where you need to go. So a sign points or directs you to the destination. And so I'm going to read some things that is going to help you and to help us uh, to understand uh, what a sign is for, what a sign is for. And I believe every sign pointed towards Christ. Every sign pointed towards Christ. Today, I want to talk about how the law, the legal, the legalness, if there's such a word, the, 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 the legality of uh, the structure of life pointed us towards Christ. How the law itself pointed us towards Christ. And then God being God, the God of the universe, he even took his nature. He took astrology and used the sign to point us towards Christ. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ is in Matthew chapter one, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And there's a lot of begats. Abraham begat Isaac and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat Judah and his brethren. I noticed there that he didn't talk about Simeon or Reuben. Stop at Judah because we know that Christ is prophetically spoken of coming from the tribe of Judah. So Matthew directly pointed us to the son of Jacob that mattered for this discussion in Matthew. So he stopped at Judah. And then from Judah, there's some more begats. There's some more begats. And I thought there was something real interesting the only women for name that was spoken in the lineage of Jesus was Rahab and Ruth. Didn't even, he didn't even mention Bathsheba. He referred to Bathsheba as uh, her that had been the wife of Urias. Just some interesting thoughts on this generational begot. Because I know sometimes, if you like me, sometimes you want to skip over those begots and those generations and we don't think that's talking about nothing because it's talking about who begot who. But for this, the genealogy of Jesus, I thought it was really important to look at those footnotes that the only woman that was mentioned by name was Rahab, and we call her the harlot, and Ruth. And Ruth, who was, you know, Boaz, the king and redeemer. She was the one that was gleaning. And how we're all connected. And then Uriah's wife. Didn't say Bathsheba, it's just Uriah's wife. So I think those are three important women in the lineage of Jesus. And what we can all be blessed by is that even somebody like Rahab the harlot, she's in the lineage of Jesus as well. So 
but all of the genealogies, everything was pointing us and directing us to Christ. Until we get down in the text, we get down to verse 16, it says, and Jacob begot Joseph. Not Jacob, the patriarch Jacob from Abraham, Isaac. There's another Jacob way down in the lineage. Jacob begot Joseph. This is the earthly father of Jesus. Jacob begot Joseph. And the scripture says, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. You notice how it's now is born of Mary. The same way Solomon was born of Uriah's wife, which is we know as being Bathsheba. But everything, if I can really just hone this in, everything pointed us to Christ. And just very interesting, you all know that Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is his position. Christ is his title. He is called Christ. And the scripture says that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son, and you would call his name Jesus. He was not begotten of Joseph. He was born of Mary. Very important in the lineage. And then we break down in 17 through the remainder of the chapter. It talks about the generations. Verse 17 says, from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Again, there's another verse very, very a matter of fact, if you would, pointing to Christ. Everything is pointing to Christ. We even say in our dates, we say BC before Christ or AD after death because everything points to Christ. I'm going somewhere with this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. And then he talks about the birth of Jesus Christ. Now we go to Matthew chapter two. Y'all stay with me, Matthew chapter two. And it began again. Now that was the generation. That was the natural part. That was the lineage. Everything was pointing to Christ. He is the subject who is going to be the Christ. This Christ has been spoken of throughout all scriptures. The prophets spoke and pointed towards Christ. So now we're going to get down to who is this Christ. And we're saying that Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Now, Matthew chapter 2 says, When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came out wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Listen, for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Again, Here's another sign, God being the God of the universe, he can use whatever that is his disposal. And now he has created nature. He has created the stars of the heaven to give direction. The astrologers now can say this star is different. Some star is shining in the east and this star is giving us direction. The star is not what we're gonna worship. The star is not where we're trying to go, but the star is pointing us to something or someone and we believe that everything is pointing to the Christ. So the wise men, the wise men, they had nothing to do with pushing an agenda. They were wise men. And in the fullness of time, the star was communicating to them. They went to the wrong person to ask for direction, but they went to the king. They went to the Herod. Herod and Herod got a little jealous because he was threatened by this new king that was going to be born to the Jews. So he asked them to come together. He grabbed the religious people of that day and said, what are they talking about? Well, who is he speaking of? And he said, well, tell the wise men to go ahead and go where they're going. But when they get there, send me word because I want to come worship him too. And you know, Herod really did not want to come worship uh, Jesus at all. He wanted to actually get rid of Jesus at, from the birth. He wanted to abort God's whole operation. But you cannot stop what God has started. Everything is pointing to Christ. And Herod said, I'm going to come down and take a look. So now we got the generation. We got the lineage pointing to Christ. We have nature itself or we have the astrologers. The universe is pointing to Christ. And now we even have his adversaries trying to get to Christ. But we have wise men. Wise men are saying, I'm going to follow this star because it's directing us somewhere. The Bible says, and 
when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. The star led them directly to Christ. And the Bible says when they saw the star, they rejoice with exceeding great joy. They rejoice with exceeding great joy when they saw the star. Verse 11 says, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. What I like about this, you know, we do it in most of our service. We call it praise and worship. We call it praise and worship. And praise is normally the songs that we sing to, to praise God and to magnify God. Normally those songs are, are, are more of a, of a, of a fast pace, a magnify. We're clapping our hands and we're praising God, right? And we're praising God. And, and they say when, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. But the scripture says that God inhabits the praise of his people. So if we praise God according to his word and we praise and lifting up holy hands and we're rejoicing in God, not only does blessings come down, but the blesser comes down. So God inhabits the praise of his people. So I see this right here. They praise God. They rejoice when they saw the sign. They rejoice when the sign stopped where it was supposed to go. They rejoice when they saw it with exceeding great joy. But the scripture says that when they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they fell down and worshiped. They thought they recognized the presence of God. They recognized the presence of his son. And they, they, they had their own praise and worship right here. They, they praise God and they magnify God for the star. But when they actually saw God in the person of Jesus, they bowed down and worship. So this is to me, one of those praise and worship service that you cannot mimic. Those praise and worship service that was from the heart because when they saw him, they fell down and worship and opened their treasures they presented unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh and i said it this past thursday is like it's amazing on jesus's day that we have set aside to celebrate the birth of our lord it's like the only birthday i can can, can see that i've been a part of that we give gifts to each other we give gifts to everybody else but i want to know what gift do you have for Christ today? What gift would you bring Christ today? What, what gift can you, because everything points to Christ. It is his day. It, it is why we're rejoicing. It is why we're saying Merry Christmas. It is why we're, the spirit of giving is in the air. It is why that we're having all this love being poured on each other because God gave, because God gave, he initiated something. And when these wise men came and they saw him, because everything pointed to the Christ, they gave him gifts. They gave him gifts for a king. As being a little baby, they gave him gifts for a king. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So now we have you. the universe has pointed to the Christ. We have that the lineage was really getting down to Christ. We have Herod, the, ad, ad, the adversary, wanted to know who this Christ was for different reasons. He had different motives, but everybody wanted to know who Christ is. Everybody wanted to find out. You know, you have people that are going to hate on you, and you're going to have people that's going to support you. Either way, God is pointing us to the very Christ. And two more thoughts that I want you to all see that is related to this uh, for me uh, is found in uh, let's go to Galatians chapter 3 Galatians chapter 3 uh, verse 24 verse 24 it says wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith oh wow now here is the Mosaic law bringing us to Christ Everything points us to Christ. Here's the Mosaic law saying, now my purpose was not to save you. My purpose was not to justify you. This is the Mosaic law. But my purpose was to be a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. It was not to bring us unto a denomination. It was not to bring us to a church building or a synagogue. But the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to nobody but Christ. So even the Mosaic law 
pointed us to Christ. Everything lined up and pointed us to Christ. So I was excited about that. So now I got the legal right to say Christ is my answer. I got the legal right to rejoice in this day because Christ, he's the one. So then in my last verse, my last chapter uh, uh, is Romans chapter 8. And I'm looking at all these good uh, uh, notes in my scripture, in, in the scripture, in, in, in my book. And I'm like, wow, everything is pointing us to the Christ. It's not just old little town of Bethlehem. It's, it's more that God was, God was preparing us a way to come back to him. And everything was pointing us to Christ. So now the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. And so while uh, the law was good, just and holy, and you're like, Pastor Michael, how come the law couldn't deliver us? The law, how come being righteous and holy and keeping the law couldn't deliver us? Well, Romans 8 and 3 says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh why that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit so now the law is like don't put the responsibilities of christ on me my job was to point you to christ i'm the schoolmaster to bring you to the master i'm the schoolmaster to bring you to the one that god has made choice of John the Baptist said, I must decrease so he can increase. John the Baptist said, in the water with Jesus, with his disciples behind him. Look, I'm not the one. He told Jesus, look, I'm not even worthy to baptize you. I'm not even to, worthy to unlatch your sandals. I, you should be baptizing me because he recognized that he was the Christ. And in John 1, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the whole world. That's the one we're pointing to. That's the one we're pointing to. And my, my last analogy in scripture is that the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Like, what you talking about that for on Christmas? I'll tell you why. This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. And the law said she should be stoned. That's what her accuser said. The law said, Moses said she should be stoned. They said, what do you say? The Bible says that they actually drug this lady to Jesus caught in a very act of adultery and a, in an accusatory judgmental way drug this little lady <laughs> drug her to Jesus and when I look at it now through my God Holy Ghost sanctified eyes I say well at least they got it right they drug her to the right person because even the sinner their direction should be coming right to Jesus her sin her situation even the accusers brought her to Christ and that's what we're saying today through all the busyness through all the hustle and bustle of Christmas and and the dinners and the and the dressing up and taking pictures and sending cards and did I forget this loved one did, did you get a card from them did you get a present uh, don't lose Christ in the midst of all of this don't lose the fact that this day is about him Everything we're doing points us to Christ. Everything about this day points us to Christ. And I want to challenge you today to make sure that Christ stays in Christmas because this is his day. This is his day. How would you feel if it's on your birthday? My birthday is July 13th, and that's my special day. I tell people to block off the streets from me. I tell my family, this is my day. And they know it. It's my day. It's daddy's birthday. It's, 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 it's babe's birthday. We got to set down everything. It's my day. I would be insulted if on my day that a cake was made for everybody but me. That, that, that presents were brought for everybody but me. And I'm sitting at the birthday table in the birthday seat with a birthday hat on and nobody is paying attention to me. Nothing is pointing to who the birthday is for. Oh, I'm so grateful that my family recognized that it's my birthday and they recognize me. And I, my challenge to do, my reminder to you this afternoon is that you would take a hard look that everything in scripture points us to Christ. From the star to the legality of the law to the mosaic law 
to the generational that was covered in Matthew, everything pointed us to Christ. And today, I want to just refocus you and point your direction back to Christ. Turn your eyes back towards Jesus and let's celebrate his birthday the right way. Let's celebrate his birthday the right way. Sure, share presents, share gifts with one another, but make sure you present your gift like the little drummer boy. You present your gift to God and recognize that it's his day. God bless you. God bless you. And let's celebrate. Let's celebrate Jesus unapologetically. We don't know if it was December 25th. We're not going to argue with the skeptics on when he was really born, what day it was. No, miss me with that. We know for unto us a child was born, and unto us a son was given. We're going to call his name Jesus. This is Pastor Mike. I want to wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas. God bless.